Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to the first class for preparation for your first communion. I am so excited that your first communion is coming up soon. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn a little bit about the mass and we're going to concentrate on the first part of the mass. Okay, so there's two main parts of the mass and today we're going to talk about the first part of the mass. But before we even do that, I'd like to talk about a couple of things inside the church. So it's really important when we can go back to church. I know some of us are back already and some of us watch mass on live stream at 11 o'clock on Sundays, or maybe your family records it, at, or maybe your family watches it at a different time, goes to our website and watches it at a different time. But it's really important to try to watch mass or go to mass each week. And once this pandemic is over, hopefully we all can go to mass together. So for preparing for your first communion, I wanted to talk about a few things inside the church. So when you walk inside the church, right, you always go look for the altar. And then on the altar, there's a crucifix hanging. And what you would do is if you walk to your seat and you pass the altar, you would genuflect. And you would, when you genuflect, you go down on one knee or you would bow and then you would make the sign of the cross. And the reason why you do that is out of respect, right? Also, if you look to the right of the altar, you'll see a little room. It's the, our tabernacle um, chapel. And the tabernacle is the place that we put all the leftover Eucharist. So once the priest calls upon the Holy Spirit and changes the bread into the body of Christ, after mass, we sometimes have leftover Jesus. And we put Jesus in the Eucharist it's called the Blessed Sacrament then, we put him in the tabernacle. And the way you would know if Jesus was in the tabernacle is you would see a little a candle uh, lit near the tabernacle. If you go to any church anywhere in the world, any Catholic church, and you see a beautiful um, vessel that looks like a tabernacle, if you see a lamp or a, uh, or a candle lit right next to it, then you know Jesus is exposed in there. So the Blessed Sacrament is in there. Okay, so I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about God's house, the church, and respecting the church. Every time you pass the altar or every time you go near the tabernacle, you would make a little bow or you would genuflect on one knee, which means you kneel on one knee and then you bless yourself in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk about is the three. So we have seven sacraments, boys and girls, and you already received two of them right? Most of you have already received two of them. Everybody got baptized and most of you got baptized as a baby. And then the next sacrament that most of you just received is the sacrament of reconciliation or your confession. Some of you still have to do it, but most of you did that. There's two other sacraments of initiation, meaning sacraments of belonging, and they are Eucharist, which is the sacrament you're preparing for. And then in our parish, in ninth grade, you receive your sacrament of confirmation. So baptism and confirmation are very closely linked together. At baptism, your parents chose this sacrament for you. They decided that they wanted to raise you as a child of God. So they brought you to your baptism, chose God parents for you, and they chose to bring you to mass, and they chose to teach you about Jesus. Your confirmation is the second part of that baptism where you choose it for yourself. You choose to be a Catholic Christian, and you choose to come to mass, and you choose to live and show the world that you're a child of God. And then the Eucharist is the third sacrament of initiation. That's when you become closest to our Lord Jesus because you actually invite him into you. Okay, and you can receive baptism only once and confirmation only once, but you can receive communion every day if you want. Now, boys and girls, you all go to school, so you can't come during the day. I work at Mount Carmel, so I am free to go to Mass because it's right here. And so there are some people coming to Mass every day, and they're praying for all of you. But you are invited to come to Mass every Saturday night or Sunday morning. And right now, some of you are watching it live stream through our website, and that's perfectly fine. So there's three sacraments of initiation. Okay, and then the one that we're going to talk about the most today is the Eucharist. But first, if your parents are sitting next to you, and if they're not, stop the video for a minute and go and get them, because you really need to be doing this class together. And parent, what I want you to do is tell your child all about their baptism. Okay, so you're going to tell them where you're about, where they were baptized, what was the name of the priest who chose uh, 
their godparents and why did you choose that baptismal name for them and how did you feel about it all? Okay, so stop the video for a minute and talk a little bit about how special their baptism was and why did you choose parents to get your child baptized? Okay, and then when you're ready, we can go to the next slide. So I wanted you to know that there are two parts of the mass, two main parts. The first main part of the mass is called the liturgy of the word. Can you all say that with me? The liturgy of the word. The second main part of the mass is called the liturgy of the Eucharist. So the liturgy of the word feeds our heart, our mind, and our soul. It gives us the what is the word of God? What is God trying to teach us and tell us today? And then we get filled up with his body and blood in the liturgy of the Eucharist. So today we're going to focus on the first main part of the mass, which is called what, everybody? The liturgy of the word. Okay. So the liturgy of the word includes two parts. So if you know, like when we walk into mass, when the mass starts, we begin with song, and we're all standing up and the priest walks up the aisle with the altar servers and the lectors and we're all singing together. And then the priest does the opening prayers. That's all called the introductory or gathering rites. Then everybody sits down and we listen to three scripture readings and that's called the liturgy of the word. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have you watch a little video with me that talks about the introductory rites. So please watch this video with me and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. So these are the blessed videos that you watch for the uh, preparation for reconciliation. So I know they're really good and let's watch this together. I am gonna try to skip the, um, the introduction to it. So let's put it on. And and resurrection. I love the mass. Sorry. The I know that God has got a plan for you too. Hey, hey, hey. We come to church on Sunday to celebrate Mass. It's a great way to thank God for all the blessings He has given us. At Mass, we remember Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. I love the Mass. The most amazing thing happens that doesn't happen anywhere else in the whole world. And what's that, Sarah? Hey, I'm open. Toss it over here. Look, no hands. Come on, Tiny, we're ready. Okay. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you, thank you. Ugh. That was pretty amazing. Father Tom, I'm curious. What's the most amazing thing you've ever experienced? Well, I'll give you a hint. I get to experience this amazing moment every single day. The sunrise. The sunrise is beautiful, but some mornings, the sunrise is blocked by the cloud. Is it Hemingway? Good guess. He is certainly special. But, believe it or not, there is something even more amazing than Hemingway. Does it have to do with the Mass? It sure does. The incredible thing that happens at Mass is that bread and wine turn into the body and blood of Jesus. Amazing! But Father Tom, I've been wondering, how does that happen? Well, God gives priests special powers. Whoa! You mean like a superhero? Kind of. Remember at your first reconciliation, how God forgave your sins through me? Yeah. During Mass, God transforms the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus through the priest. That is truly remarkable. It is. The other amazing thing that happens at church is that we get to receive Holy Communion. We get to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. This is an amazing blessing. When you go back to your pew after you receive Jesus in the Eucharist, kneel down, close your eyes, and pray. This is a very special moment because God is inside you. but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let's talk about the four parts of the Mass. One, 
the gathering rites. Two, the liturgy of the Word. Three, the liturgy of the Eucharist. Four, the farewell rite. Let's start with the gathering rites. Mass begins with a procession. The priest, deacon, readers, and altar servers walk together in procession toward the altar. The procession is usually accompanied by music. Music helps us to raise our hearts to God in praise and thanksgiving. I don't know about anyone else, but music always fills me with joy. This is your heart and soul leaping for joy. And you're not alone, Sarah. Many people feel that way. Music is a powerful way to pray. As St. Augustine said, singing is like praying twice. Right. Once the priest gets to the altar, he begins with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The sign of the cross is a rite. Yes. Very good, Elijah. God loves healthy relationships, and a very important part of healthy relationships is saying sorry when we do or say something that hurts the other person. Catholics say sorry. The reason is because our friendship with God and our friendships with each other cannot thrive if we don't say sorry. If you were playing in the playground with a friend yesterday and she pushed you over and didn't say sorry, how would you feel? You might wonder if she was really your friend. But if she came up to you and the first thing she did was say, I'm sorry I pushed you over yesterday. I won't do it again, please forgive me. How would that make you feel? You would be reminded that she really does want to be your friend. Is that why after the sign of the cross, the first thing we do at mass is say sorry to God? Exactly, Ben. We do this because we want him to know that we are his friends and that we want to be a really good friend to God. Ready, Hemi? Okay, go long! We say sorry to God and ask for forgiveness at the beginning of Mass with a really simple, beautiful prayer. The priest says, Lord have mercy, and the congregation echoes what the priest says, like this. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Amen. Hi, Sister Rosa. Hi, Tiny. Hello, everyone. Great, you brought your guitar. Of course. On a beautiful day like this, I love to praise God with song. Perfect. We were about to talk about the Gloria. At different times in life, we pray for different reasons. And at different times in the Mass, we pray for different reasons. Can anyone name some of the ways we can pray? I believe when we pray, asking God to help us, this is called a prayer of petition. A prayer of intercession is where we pray asking God to help other people. Sometimes we pray thanking God for all the ways he blesses us. I think this type of prayer is called a prayer of thanksgiving. Very good. And sometimes we pray to praise God for his goodness. This is called a prayer of praise. The Gloria is a prayer of praise. Sometimes we sing it and sometimes we say it, but always for the same reason, to praise God. Sarah, darling, you have the voice of an angel. Would you mind joining me in song? Of course, Sister Rosa, I'd be delighted. song requests? Oh my! After the Gloria, the priest reads the opening prayer from the lectionary. Then the whole congregation responds saying, Amen! Then we sit down to listen to the Word of God. Excuse me, I love this one!
Okay, so that is the introductory rights. And let me put my um, video back on so you can see me. Hold on a second, everybody. Uh, okay, you can see me again. Okay, so we just watched a short video clip on the introductory rights, right? So we walked up, we watched the priest walk up the aisle with the lectors. The lectors are the people that are going to proclaim the scripture for us and with the priest and with the altar servers, right? And we all sang, we all participated fully in the mass by singing the song. And then we always start the mass, the priest always starts the mass the same way, calling upon the Holy Trinity by saying in the name of the, we pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Remember, Jesus is always working directly with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. So we call upon the Holy Trinity every time we come to mass. Okay, so then we start with saying, I'm sorry to God, and then we thank God, and then we praise God. So we use three different types of prayer in the opening rites of the introductory rites of the mass. So first we say, we're sorry, then we say, thank you, God, and then we say, God, we praise you. And praising God means that we put him at the front of our life, that he is the most important thing in our life is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So now after the introductory rites, then we're ready to listen to the word of God. So the next thing we do now is, let me just put this on present. Okay, so the next thing we do now is we, um, we talked about the entrance song, we talked about the sign of the cross, we talked about the penitential rite or telling Jesus we're sorry, we talked about praising God when we sing or pray the Gloria, and then the priest reads the opening prayer. We're all still standing at this time. He goes to the lectionary, which is the special book of all prayers and readings, and he reads the opening prayer, and then we all respond with the word amen, which means Jesus, I believe. And so if you want to look at this further, you can go to your book, your first communion book, and look on pages 72 and 73, and you can go over that after. So now what we're going to do is concentrate on the liturgy of the word. So after the opening rites, then we all sit down and one of the people at mass walk up to the ambo and they actually read or proclaim the word of God. And we have to listen to these scripture readings very carefully because Jesus is talking to us in these readings. So let's watch this little video first and then we'll talk about it. Okay. So we go here. Hold on one second, everybody. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> The opening, we're going to try to. Okay, here we go. We're going to listen to this together. We're going to watch this together on the scriptures. The, At the Mass, when we word. listen to the Word of God and reflect on how we can live our lives as God invites us to, we are participating in the Liturgy of the Word. This includes readings from the Bible, the homily, the creed, and the intercession prayers. Good morning, Ben. Are you excited? Um, yeah. I mean, yes. Yes, Father Tom, I am excited. We are having a Mass to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the parish, and I asked Ben to do the first reading. So, at Mass on Sunday, we listen to four readings from the Bible, right? Yes, the first reading is from the Old Testament. The Psalm is from the Book of Psalms. The second reading is from the New Testament, and the Gospel reading is from one of the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Are the readings random? Each reading is especially selected to connect with the theme that the church wants us to reflect on that week. And guess what? What? Every Catholic parish reads the same readings each Sunday. So if you have a friend on the other side of the country, you can talk about the readings because they heard the same readings you heard at Mass. That's incredible. 
I know, pretty cool, right? Okay, get on up there and see what the view looks like from the Ambo. So who reads which reading? Well, different people read different readings. You are a lay person. A lay person is an unordained member of the church. A lay person usually reads the first reading, the psalm, and the second reading. The priest or the deacon reads the gospel. Both the priest and deacon are ordained members of the church. Hmm. Um, Father Tom? What's up? This week in class, Sister Rosa said some parishes don't have mass every Sunday because there are not enough priests. Is that true? Yes, it is. That's so sad. What do they do? Some Sundays, these parishes have to have communion services instead of mass. What happens then? During a communion service, we still listen to the readings of the mass and the Eucharist is distributed from the tabernacle. In this case, a lay person can read the gospel. Okay, thanks. So what happens after the gospel? That's where I come in. After the gospel, the priest or deacon delivers the homily. During the homily, one of us explains the readings, shows us how they apply to our lives, and inspires us to live what we have just heard from God's word. At least we try anyway. That's awesome. Yep. Being a priest is a great life. Now come on, let's get started. So now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go over that. So the liturgy of the word. Let me share my screen again. Not sure where that is, but hmm. okay, boys and girls. For some reason, I lost the. Uh, there we go. Sorry about that. Let's go to present. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the readings. So I told you before there's three readings, but Mrs. Hunt was wrong. There's four readings because we count the responsorial psalm that we sing at Mount Carmel at Sunday Mass as the reading because it comes from the book of Psalms. So a lector, which is someone that's trained to proclaim the word of God to us. So it's someone from one of us from the mass, maybe some of your parents or grandparents or aunts or uncles are lectors at their church. And when you get older, if you would like to be a lector, even in high school, that would be a wonderful way to serve our parish and serve our God. So the first reading is read by a lector and that's from the Old Testament. And then in our church at Sunday mass and Saturday night mass, we sing the responsorial psalms or our cantor leads us in that. It can be sung or it can be read. So if it was going to be read, then someone would go up to the AMBA, which is that special place where the lector reads the reading. And that's always from the Old Testament, from the Book of Psalms. And then in our church, it's usually a different reader reads the second reading. But in some parishes, the same reader reads the first reading, the responsorial psalm, and the second reading. And it's Sunday Mass or Saturday Night Mass. The second reading comes from the New Testament. So remember the Bible is made up of the Old Testament, which is all the readings, uh, everything that happened before the birth of Jesus. And then the New Testament is all the parables and all of the gospels and all of the things that took place after the birth of Jesus. Okay, and then after we read, listen to the second reading, then either the deacon or the priest goes up to the ambo and reads the gospel and we all stand up. And the reason why we stand up is because that the words of the gospel are the words that Jesus spoke. It's what Jesus said, it's what Jesus did, and it's the meaning of his life. So it's the most important scripture, the most important readings we will listen to. And so we want to stand up and pay special attention. And that's why the priest or the deacon reads the gospel. And remember that God is feeding us with his word through all of those four readings. So the responsorial psalm usually connects the first reading, the second reading, and the gospel. So like at your first communion day, it's usually this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Because every time a person receives Jesus for the first time, all the angels in heaven rejoice and God rejoices. So it's it's the, the responsorial psalm connects the readings and helps the readings come to life in our life. 
And then we have the gospel. And then after the gospel, we have a homily, which is given by the deacon or the priest, most of the time the priest. And the homily takes those readings and connects the readings to our life so that we can be inspired to live differently once we leave Mass. We actually get fed by that Word of God. And if you come to Mass with four other people in your family, as you listen to those four readings, you might have gotten something totally out of it, different than your mom or your brother or your sister. And that's okay, because God is wanting you to get that message that day. So it's really good after Mass to talk about the Scriptures and what was God saying to you? What words jumped out at you? Or what in the homily really hit home for you? So the reason why the priest gives the homily is to connect the readings to our life so that we can go and live like Jesus, be inspired to live as a follower of Jesus Christ. So after the homily, we, we profess our faith, right? At Mass, we usually pray the Nicene Creed. Sometimes we pray the Apostles' Creed. But most of the time, it's the Nicene Creed. And the Creed is a prayer that uh, sums up everything we believe as Catholics. And it's in your book. So I'd love for you to go over that prayer with your parents at some point um, before the next session. So it's in your book. I'm going to tell you what uh, page it's on. It is on page 75, the Nicene Creed. And the creed sums up everything we believe. So if you go to school and your friends ask you, what did you do yesterday? And you said, oh, I was preparing for First Communion uh, because I'm Catholic and I want to receive my First Communion. Your friend might say, well, what do Catholics believe? You could pray the Nicene Creed and it sums up. So it starts, I believe that there's one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. And it goes on. But the profession of faith is what... It's everything we believe as Catholics. So now I'm gonna ask you to watch this little video with me on the profession of faith. Okay, so I'm going to take myself off video and then we're gonna start this little video together. Whoa. <laughs> At Mass, after the homily, we stand and proclaim the creed together, and then we have the prayers of the faithful. Everyone believes something. There are many things we believe as Catholics. We believe in God, we believe God loves us, we believe God has blessed us, and we believe in the power of prayer. But there are many other things we believe. At Mass each Sunday, we proclaim the creed. The creed is a summary of the core beliefs that make up our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The creed brings great clarity to life. Every week we are reminded of what we believe and how far God is willing to go to show us He loves us. The creed is amazing. 
Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the creed. So let me stop that. Let me share my video. And let me go back to the session. Okay. So the next thing that we do after we listen to the creed, we actually don't listen, we pray it together. And all the boys and girls, all of you that are making your first communion, when you come to mass, we ask you to pray it out loud with all of us, okay? So we actively participate in the mass. And listen to the words that you're praying. Listen carefully to those words. And then the last thing we do is the prayer of the faithful uh, for, the open, for the liturgy of the word. And the prayer of the faithful is when uh, one of the um, lectors goes and prays for everybody in our parish. We pray for each other. We pray for the church, the whole church. We pray for the world. We pray for people in our community. We lift up all the people that are sick in our parish. And we lift up all the people that have passed away and gone to heaven. So we pray. We are a parish family together. and We lift one another up in prayer. And any of the world needs, like, Right now at all the masses, we're always praying for everybody that is sick with the virus. We pray for all the frontline workers. We pray for the vaccine that it gets out and that it works. So like we're praying for the needs of each other because we're one family together, God's family. And so that's the end of the uh, liturgy of the word. And then what I want you to do today, or at some point before you watch the second presentation, which is the Liturgy of the Eucharist, I want you to go over some of the a book with your mom or your dad. So you're going to go over the first main part of the Mass, and you can use page 72 to 76, which is the Liturgy of the Word, or you can use pages 34 to 38 and actually do some of those activities on the Liturgy of the Word. And then one of the things that you should have done before you watch this first video, and if you didn't get a chance to do it, please do it sometime between now and then the next time that you watch the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And that's to complete pages four and five, six, seven, and eight, okay, in your book. And then uh, parents, after we get off this session today, I would like you to talk to your child about what excites you most about your child's first communion day. I know that parents, you've been looking forward to this, and I'm really looking forward to this. And I have to tell you that the whole parish is looking forward to this. Whenever a person receives Jesus for the first time, it's exciting for the whole parish. You know, you're such a witness, boys and girls, when you come in in your first communion dresses and your suits and your outfits. It reminds all the other people, all the other parishioners that are at that mass of their first Holy Communion. And it helps them with their faith. It helps them feel closer to our Lord. So you're a witness to all of us, and we're really excited about this, a special sacrament that you're going to receive. So I thank you for preparing with me today, and I ask you to do those two assignments. Remember, if you didn't get to do pages, you know, one to eight, do that as well. And then we'll see you next time for the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And the more you go over, parents and your child, the more you go over the first part of the Mass, the more you go over, like, how many readings we have and the profession of faith, if you could read that together and how we um, pray for one another. The more you go over that, the more comfortable you'll be when we come to mass together and you make your first communion. The more you understand it, the more you get out of it. So thank you and we'll see you soon. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay, goodbye boys and girls.